You know, when we first started these discussions, um, I was troubled because while we have we have utilities, we have um, we have insurance companies, we had uh, um, attorneys representing victims, uh, we have our, our our workers who work with utilities. The issue that wasn't really being discussed much was victims um, the, directly. I mean, they were they were being discussed, but they certainly weren't at the top of the list, and that frustrated me. I think once uh, the decision was made to remove inverse condemnation from the discussion, um, we saw that it, there seemed to be a pathway for the victims, and that that pleased me. And I think that 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 is the right thing, the right thing to do. Issues that represent my bottom line, or as I have written in the press, um, my line in the sand. Uh, I think it is uh, critically important that we have regulatory changes to facilitate fire prevention and vegetation management. And the language in the proposal is close in many ways, and I think we can get there, but the devil is in the details, and sometimes a single word or two make a huge difference. Currently, in my district, or parts of my district, there's a fire burning that called the Mendocino Complex. And today, the latest reports are that it is at 459,000 acres. Now, that is more than 50% larger than the last previous large fire, which was the Thomas Fire in, in Senator Jackson's district. 230,000 acres have burned in Assemblymember Dolly's district, destroying a thousand, over 1,000 homes. And that fire is still burning. And I don't believe it's completely contained yet. It's very close. Clearly, we have an issue. Over a million acres has burned already this year. And we haven't hit September 1st. We've been talking about vegetation management, he and I, for quite a while. And um, I will never forget my very first year in the assembly, listening to Brian on the very last night of session say, I'm worried about fire. I'm really worried about fire. And I can't remember exactly what he said, but I do remember what happened the next day. And a major wildfire broke out in Lake County. And that was the beginning of what we've been seeing here that had these catastrophic fires. We absolutely need significant ongoing funding for prevention and vegetation management. Now, currently, the language that's before us provides for about $190 million. And I've been asking for $300 million. And I didn't pull that number out of the air. That number came from, essentially, from the legislative analyst report in April asking for $280 million. I think that's a little light. And I think there's other things that we need as well. So I'm looking for language, and I know what those words are, that guarantee this funding. And I, I, I don't think I can settle for less than that. I want the guarantee. We deserve the guarantee. California deserves a guarantee to know that we're going to do everything we can to protect property and make people safe in this state. Part of this, we should also be considering how we ensure that our firefighters have the tools and the assets to be able to protect our communities and protect the people who live in them and make their jobs safer as well. And I've been round and round about, you know, how we look at the, the, the past fires. And, you know, I've been, I, I don't believe that changing the rules for 2017 is the right thing to do. This, this proposal before us talks about a variety of things that we need to, we need to be able to do. Uh, to be considered for the PUC to potentially consider how the liability might be parceled out in the future. But a lot of the things that, that would influence that decision weren't done prior to 2017. They weren't done. And I think, I think, I think that it's pretty obvious that a lot of the hardening that we're asking for simply doesn't exist. I absolutely believe that we need some sort of a test to make sure that shareholders pay first, that rate payer increases that are needed after that, because I don't believe that there's going to be enough money um, with, with the utilities. And we should find a way that we securitize that or, or spread it out so that the pain is small 
over a 20 year period. And I'd love to know at some point the numbers on that, what, how that works out. But part of that also has to be that we protect the most vulnerable people, the people who can't afford those, any rate increases. And I think we have to figure that going forward. I do believe that, that the process laid out in this, in this document that, that, that considers other issues going forward, like the impact of climate change, like wind, like humidity, like all those things, absolutely should be considered after we actually have the grid hardening we need. And that grid hardening shouldn't wait until we go through a PUC rate making process. That should start right away. And not only should it start right away, we need to make sure that the money that's being collected from ratepayers to do that is actually spent appropriately, and we ought to audit and make sure that that happens.